food bloggers. Hi, how are you today? Thank you so much for tuning in to the Eat Blog Talk podcast. This is the place for food bloggers to get information and inspiration to accelerate your blog's growth and ultimately help you to achieve your freedom, whether that's financial, personal, or professional. I'm Megan Porta, and I've been a food blogger for over 12 years. I understand how isolating food blogging can be at times. I'm on a mission to motivate, inspire, and most importantly, let each and every food blogger, including you, know that you are heard and supported. The topic in today's episode is a little bit heavy, but also one that I think we don't talk about often or enough, and that really needs to be addressed in our space. As every one of you knows, food blogging can be hard at times. It can be lonely, isolating, and some of us even struggle from anxiety and depression, self-worth issues, self-esteem, and I mean, we could go keep going on and on with that. If you have struggled with any of that at any point in your food blogging career, please give this episode a listen. I think it's really important to shed light on these issues. My amazing guest in this episode is Eric Samuelson from eatlikeno1.com, and he shares so openly about some of his own personal struggles and how he's navigated food blogging despite it. So it can be done. And he gives us a lot of tips and strategies that we can use to make things better so that we can be better food bloggers and better humans. This is episode number 414, and it is sponsored by Rank IQ. Hey, awesome food bloggers. Before we dig into this episode, I have a really quick favor to ask you. Go to your favorite podcast player, go to eBlog Talk, scroll down to the bottom where you see the ratings and review section. Leave eBlog Talk a five-star rating if you love this podcast and leave a great review. This will only benefit this podcast. It adds value. And I so very much appreciate your efforts with this. Thank you so much for doing this. Okay, now on to the episode. Eric runs the food blog, Eat Like No One Else, the place to be to learn how to enhance the way you eat through learning about specialty foods and ingredients and how to make the most amazing food at home. At Eat Like No One Else, they solidly believe in the philosophy, if you teach a man to fish. In 2022, Eric introduced a podcast, Eat Shop Waste Not, that teaches people how to source the most delicious groceries without wasting food or a single penny. Hey, Eric. So good to have you back on eBlog Talk. How are you today? And where are you and your family at in your RV travels? Thanks, Megan. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to talk with you again here. Um, Right now, we are in Huntsville, Alabama. We came here a couple years ago for a few days here, and we're surprised that this is a pretty nice town. Like, we were like, we weren't expecting it. We felt like, oh, it's a little stopover thing. So we like, we had to come back and check it out again. So um, we're enjoying the beautiful flowers, spring flowers here, and not enjoying so much the running from tornadoes and <laughs> air storms that you get in the South. So which is exciting hard. adventure. Being on the road is definitely an adventure, isn't it? It really sure is. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm so excited to have you here. And aside from that awesomeness about your RV travels, do you have another fun fact to share with us? Sure. I mean, it kind of relates to travel to you, but I, I have been to 48 states. The two I'm missing are the are the ones that are hard that aren't very drivable too, especially Hawaii and the other Alaska here. So those are the as I, I cut was back in no, two years almost two years now that I went to my 48th state, which was Maryland. Ooh! So that that was the one I got last. So so I've been to all the contiguous ones now. That's awesome. Okay, you guys have to eventually get up to Alaska. Is it in the plans to do that? I want to go visit her someday. I don't, we're not going to drive up there, like at least not with a camper. Like, like that would just take so yeah. long, and because there's a lot of Canada to get through to even get to Alaska. So, yeah, somehow someday we'll get to Alaska. Hopefully. Some way, then, yeah, yeah, yes. Can't wait to hear about it when you're there. Okay, so you are here today, Eric, to talk about this issue that I feel like we don't really talk about a lot, which is mental health and blogging and how they can kind of be intertwined and how our mental health can be affected because of blogging. And, you know, there are some things that kind of come along with this whole topic. So I feel like it can be really hard to be a blogger, especially over a sustained amount of time because there's like isolation issues. We're typically alone doing our work. We have like competition issues where we think everyone else has got it figured out and we don't. And then that can lead to like anxiety, depression, and just like feeling like we're not enough and all of these things together, which I know that you've kind of felt on some level too. So I'd love to hear your story with this and like what level have you felt some of these things and how do they play together? 
Sure. I think I'll kind of go back and start with my story. So I started my blog in 2009. And at that point, I was a stay-at-home dad. I only had one kid, and so it was just a, a way to, like, oh, this could be some kind of cool thing I could do maybe to earn some extra money. as an extra money thing, not as, like, a full-time job situation. You know, back then, it wasn't there wasn't as much, you know, many people doing it, and I, I just heard of an idea of somebody making money with a website online. You know, that was, yeah. I think, you know, uh, just some news store or something, like, oh, this person's talking about bees. I think it was about bees or something. They were talking about bees and they were able to make money off doing that here. It's like, oh, I can do a website thing. So I wanted, I wanted to wanted to try to do that here. And, you know, it took a, took a while to figure out that it would eventually, you know, oh, this is something I could really make a lot, a good amount of money with. I think the, I think the first time I really kind of started learning that is, see, is following Pinch of Yum. And they were doing income reports back then. So they were sharing with people what they were making. So I was like, "Oh, <laughs> there's okay." So so the, so there's some money to make with this here. I mean, this is this is you know, this could be a good a good type situation. You know, in that in itself, that was that was a blessing and also a curse at the same time. In the fact that you're like, "Oh, you know, this is something I need to do." We were struggling financially, and so something I wanted to do for you know a while and trying to make that into you know some some, some more significant money. You know, it, it took a, took a while. When I first started to get anything, I think the first, oh, hey, remember the first payment was, for the first first while, it was like, you know, hundreds a month I was making making here. I was getting some affiliate income from Amazon and a few really, really crappy ad services <laughs> I was with at the beginning that I'm embarrassed by now, probably. Yes, but, um, I remember. I mean, not for you, but for, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't what we have now. So in that, be- you know, beginning time period, it was, you know, when I learned that, I was like, oh, oh, now I can do this thing here. And but trying to tell other people that was like I had a hard, a hard time finding any support. Mm. Like people were just thinking, like you know, you know, it, it sounds like one of those like like a pyramid scheme or a Ponzi scheme or some kind of like you know, you know, you know, thing like that or you know, like one of those. You know, we're trying we're trying to sell things like an Avon or one of those <laughs> of like you know, I'm <laughs> one of those type of services or you know, I'm gonna sell Tupperware or something like it was you know it was that type of thing. You know, I eventually learned over the years the best way to to describe to people is that in the simplest terms is that we're just like a newspaper. Mm. That you earn money just like a newspaper earns money through advertising. And that's like this people understand more about that a little bit like okay, that's okay, that's a understandable thing. So back then it was it was very challenging because I didn't have like you know, a lot of, you know, people, my wife, of course, was supportive always. So, you know, I wasn't like, no one at all here, but it was a lot of negativity, a lot of like, okay, you know, this is, this isn't really a thing here. Or, and at the time too, like being a stay home dad can be, can be challenging at times. And I was like, you know, some people, you know, do get the support with that, but I was not definitely not getting that. It was more of the, you should be the one out earning the money, you know, type thing, which is not, you know, not right at all. So that time it, it, it was hard because I'm trying to like, you know, figure out how to make this into something that can earn us more money because we needed it. And so there was that kind of like pressure put on me and, and then the not, not having the support made, made, made things very difficult. So it was very isolating in that, you know, in that time period, there was nothing else going, you know, we didn't have what we have now. There wasn't blogger, blogger, Facebook groups. Yeah. Really, it wasn't. There was no tastemaker conferences. No, it was none of that type of stuff. There was not. You know, it was very hard to like really connect with other other bloggers. Like I didn't, I didn't meet another blogger in person until 2019. You know, so so like 10 years, and you were amongst one of the fe- oh. first bloggers I ever met. Oh my gosh! You know, in the business for 10 years, so it was like never like meeting a coworker. It's you know, it'd be really strange if you know that was your real. You yeah. know, in most most careers are you would you know you're working with people. So like th- that whole first 10 years, I had one person who he was making money off a forum, like just oh. like a straight up forum. And so not from like a website, really. And not, I mean, it was a website, but not from a blog per se. And he introduced me to Google Analytics. So I had him in the very beginning as someone to say, Hey, there's this thing called analytic. You should get that for your site so you can track things. Yeah. Yeah. But you had one coworker. So that's still yeah. not. So that yeah. was very <laughs> in the beginning here. And that wasn't even like, yeah. And, and then like, he like kind of fell off the face of the earth. So, there was yeah, so it was most of the time just kind of doing it myself until you know reading of that, and, and it was hard. It was like a lot of people, you know, it was not a lot of faith in it. I took, you know, it was taking me a long time to, you know, like I knew I could earn the money here, but like I had some friends, even even best intentions, were like, "What are you doing?" You know, type mm-hmm. of thing. Like like this wasn't happening, like in you know, in their time period for right. it here. So it made it really difficult. I eventually had a point where I ended up going to work 
and spent years, like five plus years working in the produce industry in uh, at grocery stores, um, small mom and pop one first, and then a and then Whole Foods Market. Spent and with that type of a trying to trying to get a business going in that type of a schedule where you're not consistent at all. Mm-hmm. Like you can't be like from one week to the next, the schedule was different, you know, different day off or, or some days you're working three to 11 and the next day you're going back and working 10 to six. And then you're trying to, you know, you know, <laughs> getting a consistent blog business going when you're, you're all over the place is, yeah, was really difficult. It was hard to like, Manage that because I, I could never have like you know like, like the best thing to do sometimes is, is to have that consistency. Yeah, like you you have certain tasks. I know, I know that's something you do. You have certain tasks. Like you record your interviews on Tuesdays, right? Like you. Yeah. So yeah, you so you, have, you know there's certain things you kind of in your mind doing that that day. And for me, that was like not possible. It was so it was more like try to find time to fit this in because I know I can do this, but yeah. trying to get to that point was like extremely hard. And I was always someone. I have someone who's who struggled with just different anxiety issues and depression, especially not, I mean, it's, it sound kind of uncommon, um, but like I more struggle seasonally in the summer, whereas, you know, you hear a lot about it, people struggling with that in the wintertime. Interesting. But for me, like, like the humidity and like, just like the heat, like it's, it naturally like makes me uncomfortable and slows me down. Hmm. So I, I think like just that like you know you know you, you, I mean I think it works most people like you don't like you know it, it, you don't want to go running at you know one p.m. on a ninety five degree day you know you yeah. want to lounge around you want to sit around here and for me for me that like just makes me feel like oh I don't want to do anything here and just you know really you know becomes like I I, I need to keep going like I need to keep moving if I start slowing down and the weather makes you slow down sometimes when it's that hot. It makes it into a challenge. Yeah. So trying, you know, trying to do so, I have, you know, that time of year each year dealing with that and trying to run a business while working a straight schedule was like extremely like mentally tasking, mm-hmm. and and not having like the you know the isolation that part of it, not having the support. I was at least being able to talk to people, you know, like at Whole Foods, you know, I could share my knowledge with people, yeah. you know. So I was kind of like sometimes blogging live sort of in a way I was like, you know, sharing things I learned and, and, and talking to customers and being like, I, like I was the, like, I, I knew if I, I, I was the best person I had before that was talking to like customer service person. I was the best in the, in the oh. department for sure. Cause you know, I, I had all the knowledge and stuff. People would all always come to me and stuff here. So you know, it was that kind of good part of it, but like, but it was still very, very difficult just to manage yeah. through that here. And I had just times where like, I couldn't figure it out. So I would just, I, I would just feel horribly like just, down depressing because it's ever gonna you know i started with the like is this ever gonna happen or you know and knowing that could happen at the same time right. like that kept me going so it's like like this is what i want i want to be i don't want to have this schedule i don't want to like have jobs where where i am you know i come home because it's really hard when you come home at night you get home at 11 o'clock at night to a house full of sleeping people yeah oh that is hard i've been there yeah there's no one to walk me there's nothing it's just like okay i just went through all this you know yeah. at work here and and, you know, I, I had a difficult coworker um, that was always hard to deal with at times. So it was, it, there was a lot of just, you know, just like every night, I'd be like, oh, this is so depressing. Oh. This is like, oh, you know, and, and it was like a 20 minute drive home too. Like it was like the long 20 minutes uh, to get back. So after a while, it was like, I can't keep like, you know, doing this to myself here. I was just like, we were struggling financially still. We weren't like, we, weren't, we were just spinning our wheels, not getting anywhere. And, and, and so like, I eventually said i can't do this anymore like i just, I just can't keep doing this i i also had heart failure i got diagnosed with heart failure oh my gosh i didn't know that eric i had a heart there was heart failure back it was at 26 no 2017 early 2017 and was that due to stress or was it something else well we a bad history in our family here i i had a irregular uh situation that would come out every once in a while where my heart would kick into a third gear oh so it'd be, it would be like and so it would feel like my heart is racing and i'm not moving if i'm sitting still like i was running mm. uh and and struggled with sleep apnea so so i was not sleeping either i was not sleeping oh, well. that makes that everything was, worse it was a <laughs> lot of a lot of different problems yeah. a, lot, a lot of health things going on here and eventually like that like I ended up, you know, is out of work for a while. I couldn't work for a while on um, and that. And eventually, eventually, went back here and got burnt out. Eventually, again, like it, it, it didn't take too long. It was like we, like we, like we got, like I had to stop doing this here. So I decided to like, you know, kind of bet on myself a little bit here. Mm. 
and I quit Whole. I quit working at Whole Foods. Took a a temp job for the Christmas season. It also involved in food, so it was like a it was a it was a sit down talk to people on the phone type situation with a regular schedule. But it was like I'm like, I'm like I gotta try this at some point. Like like I can't. It's never gonna work. What I was doing was never gonna work. And I, and I just mentally couldn't overcome it. I couldn't get focused enough. I couldn't do that enough. So I eventually just went for went for like hey we're gonna do this here, you know and try to go for something else afterward. Uh, if it doesn't work out, I got into media on one week into the temp job. Ooh. So that, that changed, that changed my earnings tremendously. Yeah. Cause I see part of the thing about being so busy is I, I didn't have the time to actually learn about the things that were available out there. Like media Vine was out there. I qualified it for it really simple. Cause I was already at the, I was a way above, I, I was above the threshold they currently have now. It was lower back then even, but now I'm still, I was still above that. You know, at that point, I, w- I way qualified for media vine, but because I was so like wrapped up in the other things and just trying to just get work done that I didn't have time to do the research. Yeah. So I didn't know. And, w- and once I found out and applied for it, I got in. And then, of course, my ad, my ad revenue skyrocketed because I, I was in like a good paying ad company now instead of <laughs> some, a really poor paying ad company. So that, that really changed things for me in the business stuff here. So that's kind of, you know, the... Kind of a long story, but that's, you know, I got a point. And eventually it was able to turn this, you know, support us still. Now, I do have to say to you that when I, you know, because of just the the struggles that I was having and, and just through, you know, d- depression and different anxiety and stuff here, like I probably went full time before a lot of other people may have made that decision. Yeah. Just in terms of the actual money we were making was still not like wonderful. Yeah, it was more than I was ma- that we were making, so that's part of it too. Like, like it wasn't like we were all of a sudden like, "Hey, we're rich and we're making all this money here and stuff." It was like I need it for myself. Like I and my family, I needed to do this. I needed to go full time with this here and, and and make a go of it here and really focus in on that because it just wasn't gonna, you know, it wasn't working for my whole family. For you know me particularly, like I was, I was just like, like all the time. It's like I don't like life right now it's mm-hmm. not fun it's it's un, it's unenjoyable so i really wanted to make this work and so like you know there were, def- there were definitely struggles too like i i remember like when i went to tastemaker the first time in 2019 i got a brand to sponsor my trip out there so i could afford to go there i was on such a tight budget while i was while i was there like i you know i see these people like posting about like oh i'm going out to eat this restaurant here and stuff here i'm like eating in the hotel room Aww. I'm like just trying to like, like make it by because like I I wanted to be there so badly here and uh, and then at home like you know, telling the family like hey we need to like keep money tight and stuff here so I'm trying to you know yeah. make this trip happen here because it would be important for us so like you know it was more like I took I took the risk of that way that way to it and and for me I remember back then the for me that that conference was it was a t- two it was two different days and somewhat for me in, in the way I was feeling the first day I went I was super up t- I was super uptight and I was too like. I was putting too much like pressure on myself to kind of like, I need to, Oh, I need to go meet, you know, meet these brands, talk to these people here, make this happen. And like, you know, the, the second day I was able to kind of like, okay, I just need to sit back and let yeah. things happen, you know, cause that's what uh, with blogging sometimes what I've gone into is there's been moments where it's where this is a long-term thing. This is not like, you know, this is a marathon. Yeah. So honestly, like it can be hard sometimes to you, keep the marathon, you know, keep the, that, the marathon mind going here where you look at your bank account going like, ah, uh, this is really tight here. How are we going to make, how are we going to, how are we going to make it this month? Are we going to, you know, putting like, you know, a lot of times we were putting $5 of gas in the car to get home to make sure we got home. Cause I couldn't put any more in. So just trying, trying to get, you know, through those, those situations where you're trying to do something that's long-term it, it, it's, it can be really, and I still struggle with this at times is just knowing that that is a long-term game here, but you know, you got to put the work in, you know, in every day here. So like, it still matters, you know, cause you, you know, most of you know, most of the time, you know, if we're working, you know, when we do a blog post, we don't post it. And then an hour later, you know, yeah. <laughs> go on media vine, like, Oh, I made $200 yeah. from that blog post. I mean, like there's a gap. There's a gap. Yeah. yeah. It could be, you know, six months, a couple of weeks, if you're really lucky, it could be a year, two years. I mean, I post Who that. Knows? <laughs> probably spent five years you know getting two three views a day that now make me money mm-hmm. you know so it, so it, yeah so there, there's that type of thing where it, where it, it is a long term yeah game here but when you're in the kind of like the trenches it's hard to like always keep that in mind so that like like that's 
thing that I have to keep reminding myself like all the time. It's like, I know this, I, you know, I, I, I am mentally telling this to you right now, but like, <laughs> like emotionally sometimes it like, it feels like, um, Oh man. Yeah. Like our family right now, we're looking into like, we want to eventually buy a house. And so like, we're not in position to hear and like, you know, the, everything keeps going against us, you know, with the economy and the interest rates keep going up. So it's like, you know, it's like, you're like, Oh, like, I'm trying to, trying to climb this mountain and the mountain gets Oh, I, you realize that, oh, there was a cloud there and the mountain's actually a oh, thousand yeah. feet taller. You know, type <laughs> situation. So you have to keep like, that's what I struggle with. I don't know that other people do too, I'm sure. But like, it's the, it's not like, an in, you know, this isn't, rarely do you see anything that's going to be instantaneous. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be a long, you know, process in Holland. and you have to try to remember that. It requires massive amounts of faith, no matter where you're at, right? Like, I mean, you can be, 10, 12 years in like you and I are, and still it requires a ton of faith for me every single day. So it's not like that ever goes away. (laughs) You have to think of it as a marathon no matter where you're at in your journey. And just thank you for sharing all of that, Eric. I know that that was like your unique story. And wow, the ups and downs and, you know, the getting other jobs and just trying to make it work financially. Just that's hard. And that is on top of everything that we have to deal with or not have to we this is part of the job like the blogging comes with all of the the faith and mm-hmm. the ups and the downs and the algorithm changes and the core updates and so it's a lot i mean all of this together can be a lot yeah it is and there's always something new that you know, discourage you out there unfortunately like, you know that's ready yes you know yesterday you know i had the moment where i was looking at a facebook group and someone was talking about, oh, you know, with the last update, they're they experiencing traffic drops and stuff here. So now I'm like, oh, no, you know, and I just had Easter. So I do really well for Easter. I have hand posts. I do really well. So I couldn't even tell you if something had happened mm-hmm. at that point because I'm already at a high anyway. But you have that little kind of thing in the back of your mind saying, like, you know, looking at the traffic report, too, I'm like, oh, is, it, is this a little lower than it should be right now? You kind of, you, mm-hmm. you know, you kind of start wondering those things. Like, am I getting hit with that? Because you, you can't control it. You never know. So it's, you know, so it's, it's one of those things you got to, it can be hard to, you know, it's good to be in communication with people here. But we also got to, like, not scare yourself either. Yeah. And it looks like, okay, like, I'm doing okay right now. We're, um, you know, I just went through, you know, Easter. Easter went really well. I had, you know, high traffic. It wasn't like 20, Easter 2020 was like the most ridiculous day ever in the history of my, it was the best day of the history of my blog is i had ridiculous amount of tra- traffic that day awesome rpm was terrible that day though but it was, so it wasn't my it was really it was like i still made a ton of money but i was like oh man the rpm was normal this day this would have been ridiculous yeah been like there ridiculous was such money. a weird contradiction or like yeah yeah like a uh, complete contrast Eat Blog Talk is here to support you at every stage of your food blogging journey to help you accelerate your blog's growth so you can achieve your freedom. We offer many services that will help get you on the right path no matter where you're at in your journey. Don't forget to check out our free discussion forum at forum.eatblogtalk.com. Go there to connect with like-minded peers, to learn and to grow, and to share any wins that you have. Our signature service is our mastermind program. We are currently accepting waitlist submissions for 2024. So if you want to get on the list for this year-long experience starting in January 2024, definitely do that now. If you are not quite ready for that investment, the Mini Minds program might be for you. It is a six-month program that will help you achieve your goals and overcome any obstacles that are holding you back. And if you're up for getting together in person with some like-minded food bloggers, consider coming to one of our in-person retreats in 2023. This is a great way to get to know your fellow food bloggers really well in an intimate setting to learn a ton about food blogging in a short time frame and to eat some delicious food that you will never forget. Go to eatblogtalk.com forward slash services to get all the information about all of our services. With time, I've noticed as I become a more mature blogger that those ups and downs like the RPM changes and the traffic changes don't affect me as much. Like I've just learned to like I start to get caught up in that when someone's talking about, oh my gosh, there's a, a big shift coming. I'll, for just a minute, I'll be like, oh no. I start to panic, but then I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. You've been through these before. It's always been fine. Things always progress in the right direction. And then I can kind of stop myself now. Do you get to that point too? Do you notice that 
just having invested so many years that you're like, okay, hold on, Eric, let's look at this. Yeah. Like you're saying too, like, yeah, it's easy to get caught up in that. In, in the, the latest thing is, you know, it's the, again, the, you know, that's a short-term situation. It would look like over long-term history showcases that, that there's up and downs. Like, I mean, yeah. I can you know, easily pull up analytics, pull up media, pull up anything here, and we'll show you that, that it is not just a straight climb up a mountain. You know, it's, it, it's a falling up, down, you know, I had, you know, there's up periods, down periods. Cycles. They're always, they're all cycles, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's always yeah. <laughs> some some of the cycle. You know, sometimes you're the case of I think like right now the story this year so far for me has been like increased traffic but decreased RPM. So that's that's been the story of, of this year so far. And you you know you, you hope that you know keep the, the traffic thing going and kind of catch back up. But it's one of those situations where okay, you have to adjust to it. So we have to adjust to it. Okay, this is the amount of money we're earning right now. It's not what we want to be, but we we want to increase that. But that's what the situation is now. So that has to you know so we have to adjust like what we're you know, doing on a daily basis and, and what we can save and all those type of things, because you have to know that, that it's going to be different. And, you know, throughout the years too, now I have, you know, there's different time of year too, and earning wise here, earning wise that I know I'm like, okay, these months I'm going to earn a lot of money here. This These are going to be slim pickings months here. So you have to learn to kind of balance. Adjust a little bit. You know, adjust to what's coming and try to maybe more put things throughout the whole year. So you're not feeling like the roller coaster. Yeah. Totally. You know, as much, you know, you know, I'm trying to convince myself now saying, okay, like it's okay though if I have to like say one month, okay, we need to pull some out of savings, put here and save more of that from the, like the, the great months. Cause now we're, you know, right now we just came out of getting paid for, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas. And then January's income came in this month. And I was like, you know, <laughs> so it's a big husband. Like, oh, oh, there's that. There's that now. <laughs> you know, part of the way that go. And I, how to teach, teach myself too that like like that's okay because a lot of businesses are like that honestly like a lot of you know depend on the holiday season like they don't even like like I work for one that they only make a profit during the holidays and they exist year round but like only the holidays they actually like make money right that's true yeah it's not just us yeah it's not just us at all whatsoever yeah like some things I do to kind of alleviate some of these challenges I just try not to get caught up in the details. Like I said before, like I stop myself and I've gotten better at that. Remembering that there are cycles to everything in life and food mm-hmm. blogging is no exception. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs. And in the end, it evens out and hopefully progresses. And then another thing is I stay away from the groups generally because of this, because I don't like hearing someone say RPMs are going down and like kind of telling me what I need to start believing because then I start believing it and then it starts happening. So I kind of like to be a little bit, not clueless, but I just don't like to fall into those negative, like, I don't like getting swept up in that negative thinking because that can really affect me. So that's part of the reason I started the eBlog Talk Forum because None of that is in there. We talk about being productive and ways to lift each other up and successes and we share wins and all of that. But what do you think about that? Just like the kind of the health of some of those groups and whether or not that affects you. Oh, it, def- it definitely can. And most of the too, like, you know, that we all, that, that, that you know, we like you said, you experienced too, like, like having those kind of like, like moments here, but catching yourself, like it's, like it's okay for that to happen too. Like, like it's not, you know, it's good that you're catching yourself. But also, like, I have learned, too, like, to not, like, say, oh, I, I never show up out in the first place. Like, you know, we're humans, right. mm-hmm. and we're going to have struggles, and it's okay. So, like, when you have that moment, say, so, like, okay, it's okay to say I felt, ba- you, know, I fe- you know, I felt, you know, I feel bad about my business today. It's okay that, you know, you, that you have those kind of moments. It's the being able to pick yourself back up and keep going, because you're going to keep, you're going to keep, it's going to keep happening, you know. You're going to you're gonna have those things that come against. So, it's going to be something, you know, I would, you know, this year, the big thing, people are all, frantic about is the new ai technologies and stuff here and like i i can't get myself into the weeds any of that stuff here yeah <laughs> like I, I i'm not being involved with that i'm just like okay i heard it exists here and stuff here right now it's like like i can't and it's okay like you know i think a lot of people get in this mindset like you have to like oh you better be up to everything here and know everything that's going on all the time mm. to make sure you're perfect but if it like makes it so you can't, so that you're stressed and can't be productive well that's the worst for your business than anything yeah you know if, you, if exactly. you're getting yourself you know, you can't work as well if you're if you're all you know feeling anxious and stressed about everything because you're trying to like make sure everything you do is perfect. Let's also I sometimes like I listen to some of the like you know when we talk about you know the more financial tech talks and 
different things here and you hear these other stories, you know, and about, you know, accessibility and all those things. Like I try to do my best with that, but not try to like, you know, keep myself up and I think I'm like, oh, did I forget to put an alt, oh, I alt so hear you on description? Yeah. <laughs> the image gets to be like, how many ways could I possibly be sued here? Like, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, it's the, you know, trying to, trying to do the best you can, you know, keep pruning, like, pursuing that you can. But if you get like super into that here, then your business is going to go nowhere because you're going to be so. Yeah. Caught up in it. Stressed. Yeah. I, to- I completely hear you on that because I love trying to be as accessible as possible in every way and also like inclusive and all of that. Like that's really important to me. But if, if you have a really in-depth conversation with somebody about it, I almost start feeling like, oh no, <laughs> am I like leaving people out? Am I not making everyone feel included? And then I start kind of stressing about that side and that, so I totally see where you're coming from. And that can apply to any topic that can apply to like you were talking about, like AI and whether you're up, up to speed on all the platforms and like, oh, so I feel like sometimes it's okay just to put your blinders on and just do your stuff, like do the work, put your authentic voice and your love into it. And just like, even if it's just for a period, right? Just do your work, keep moving forward and don't really listen to the outside if you need that for it for a stretch. Yeah. And you mean, yeah, if you are part, like, you know, some of those Facebook groups can be helpful too, but like, if you're, you know, I think like maybe if you get into a position where you're starting to feel discouraged by one of them, you're reading some stories here, then maybe it's best to like, okay, say, okay, I'm going to be dumb this week. I'm going to be not going to look at that anymore. I'm just going to focus on my goals right now. It's good to know what's going on, but then you can't let it so that you're not doing nothing that you're too scared to do anything here. Cause it just doesn't, it doesn't help. Yeah. I was actually removed from, one of the big Facebook groups that you guys all know years ago. And at first it was super devastating and weird. And I was like, why did this happen? But I now am so grateful because I feel like I've saved so much time stressing over things I didn't need to stress about. So I wish I could go back and tell myself like, trust me, it's going to be okay. You're going to be grateful. But it is like back and forth because you want the information, but you don't want to miss out. But then it's like, oh my gosh, you get caught up in things and worry and negativity and all of that stuff. And then- I was wondering if you have any like little tips. So everything you've talked about, like just dealing with ups and downs and anxiety and, you know, like financial issues, like, am I ever going to get there? Like all of that. Do you have tips that have helped you along the way? I mean, there's been, you know, some, some things definitely, you know, you know, the idea of not comparing yourself to others because I, you know, because it can be easily like, even when like, like, I'm like, I love going to like clubhouse things you do. Uh, but there's there's been a couple of times it's been like oh man the people someone's out there doing like something new like oh like hey I'm doing Pinterest live and doing all these things here and then you're feeling like oh I, I can't even imagine doing that because I don't know how, how, how do they have the time to do that here and then you start like going down that trail like you know and start looking at your productivity versus somebody else which is so hard because you know people are different here some people can be more productive than others you know if you know, if you're somebody that doesn't struggle with you know we all have our things we struggle with of course you know no one's mentally perfect or yeah. anything. But like, you know, if you struggle with depression or self-worth or anxiety or, you know, different things like that, then, you know, and it's something that you, you're you you're battling here, then you may not be able to get as much done as somebody who doesn't have that. Or if you're someone that, you know, maybe comes from wealth, maybe you're in a situation that where you started your business and you were already like financially set, you're not trying to, you know, make sure your, your your kids eat, you know, it's different, you know, than that. And, you know, it's a blessing that you're in that situation. And it's not like it gets, you know, you know, being in that situation. But if you are someone who's trying to make it work because you need, you know, to put food on your table and pay your bills and like you need it, then like, you know, it, it makes things different too. I think that's, you know, it can be sometimes hard to be productive or you don't, you know, you can't buy the camera. You can't go out and buy the mm-hmm. fancy camera or like, I, I actually don't have a fan. I've never owned a DSLR camera ever. At all, and I, you know, and I'm, you know, making money off my blog without, without having one. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah, you know, there's things, or you may not have, you may not be able to do all the courses. You may not be able to do, you know, all the different. Because there's so many things out. You can spend so much money on things too. And oh I my gosh, yes. look at some, yes, people's like some other people that do income reports, and I say like, oh my gosh, you're spending so much money on things here, and you know, and I try to look at myself saying, well, this person. And that's what you don't realize too, that you see someone who's making so like, oh, I brought in, you know, six figures worth of ad income this year, but then I spent half of it in, in stuff. Right. So, you know, you, you know, you can't 
That's why you don't know everyone's story. You, you don't know everyone is, you, know, you don't know everyone's story all at once either. So when you're comparing yourself, you don't know what you're, you're honestly don't know what you're comparing yourself to. And you don't know so. everyone's visions for their businesses either. Yes. Like you can look yes. at someone's numbers and have no clue what their three year, five year goals are. Right. No. Yeah. And that's another piece of this too. I feel like Eric, like if you do struggle with just being, tempted by the different platforms and like you mentioned Pinterest lives and the different things that's why it's a really good idea to have a really good grasp on your goals and your why like first of all why are you doing all of this Mm -hmm. really understand that and then have really defined goals for your business and your life and if you hear someone talk about Pinterest live and you're like oh no should I be doing this go back to your goals and see if they align if it doesn't perfect you can check it off the list you know yeah, because there's always something new. There's always something. Always. Oh, you, you can get pulled in. You can easily get pulled into, and it's okay to like, you know, to to say, you know, someone may say, you know, he may say, well, I don't want to do Pinterest at all. Like, you know, like I just can't do it. And people are like, oh, what are you doing? You can't be a blogger and not do Pinterest. That's me you going. You <gasps> <have> to, <laughs> yeah. So you know, it's one of those things that you know you have to. What's going to be, you know, what's going to work you know, feel that you're going to be able to handle doing, you know, explore that. And I think it's, you know, one thing we don't, you know, you don't hear about, you know, when you, you know, cause I've, you know, been to lots of great, you know, I've been a tastemaker, done, the, you know, online things here. I've done, you know, different, you know, webinars, things you've put on all those type of things here. And, you know, you know, part of those, you know, they're all informative. They're all, they can be good here, you know, give you good information, but like, you know, it's not like you, we, we sit there and talk about how mentally you're going to do that. How are you going to actually, get those tasks accomplished like that, that's not part of the mm-hmm. puzzle here and you're not gonna like you know go into one of those you know like i was sitting back at taste maker i'm not gonna go like you know i'm not gonna raise my hand saying you know i would love to do that idea here but like i i'm too depressed so how many you know you're not gonna say that yeah you're not gonna you know so like or you know not, like, like you don't know how to you know, make that happen like, you know because i think there's a lot of things that are laid out for us like step one step two step three okay i mean these are things i can do i know how to get there and that was my struggle for a long time was like i knew what I needed to do. I had the steps in front of me, but like, I didn't have the help to like actually do the steps. Mm. Like just, you know, it wasn't about like not understanding the steps and what needed to get done and what way to go, but it's actually like fulfilling those, like having the ideas, but not being able to fully do them. And like, I think there's like a gap in in, in that type of thing, like, like learning how to do that. That's a really good point. So not assuming that everybody yeah, like we're not all in the same boat with that. We can all, we have a capacity, I feel like, each of us as individuals. Mm-hmm. And then I'm curious, Eric, how you plan. And it, does this help? Like when you find that you plan ahead, does that help you just kind of manage everything that's going on? If you're in the heat of the summer and you're like, oh gosh, I don't want to do anything, does planning help you? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think it's important to be able to, you know, have a plan in place. Like for me, I can be more spontaneous with a plan if that makes any sense at all. That seems kind of kind of counterintuitive, but like when I'm able to like know like okay, well, this is what I can do I, now. I can you know edit things when I need be and and change things when I know like here's the potential. Like I think so, like here's the realistic potential. There's potential, then there was oh, it's actually realistic. You know, up in my head, I can like I'm gonna write six blog posts. I'm gonna I'm gonna like you know <laughs> contact twenty brands. I'm gonna talk to people. I'm gonna have this interview. You, know, you have all these things you can do, but then like. If you don't write, if you don't like make that realistic, then at the end of the week, you like I've done this so many times, and I'm someone like I love Mondays, like it's off the whole week, and then I hate Fridays because then like Fridays off or, like a day like oh now I feel like here's what I failed at, you know that's something I've struggled with is is trying to like not and make make sure it's not like so I need to have I need to know what I'm gonna do, yeah you know so I can look you know what what actually I'm going to not the ideas in my mind of what I'm going to do, but actually have it laid out. I think that helps a lot with knowing what's possible, you know, what is actually literally possible for you to do instead of this every week, have your head up in the stars and hopefully that you're going to somehow do everything. And and it's not possible, especially if like, if, you know, you know, there's going to be some time saying like, you know, I'm going to have, you know, I may have a good productive period for a while here. Um, Like I did yesterday, I had had a really good productive afternoon period, tried to work in the evening time. It did not go well. (laughs) And this, like, it, it was a new new thing I'm trying to launch. And so it's brand new. And I'm, you know, then you're, you're starting with the, like, oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Or, like, I'm my worst critic. So I'm, like, kind of saying, like, oh, I don't know if I can, does this sound good? Or is that that here? And then you end up, like, spending all your time kind of, like, doing that instead of just putting it out there. Yeah. So that's when you got to know when to, like, okay, I, 
like I had to end it saying I did not really finish this goal the way I wanted to, but I can, you know, move on. I can Pick say like I made progress. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I made, I made progress on this. Something right. yes. Um, there's like a bunch of things new I'm trying to do right now. So trying to figure out, you know, this like I'm making progress, but I mean, I have all the answers. Yeah. Oh, progress. That's a huge one. Grace and progress. Yeah. I get to the end of the week all the time and I'm like, wait, how did that happen? I didn't finish everything I wanted to do. I thought I could do it. Like, it's amazing that I still think that about myself. I'm like, have I mm-hmm. not learned <laughs> after all this time that I can't do 9 million interviews, 9 million blog posts? Like, come on. I just feel like I need to shake myself sometimes. But I sure. had an idea as you were talking. What if you have, and maybe this is what you do, but you have like a realistic plan for your week and then like icing on the cake plan. And if you get that done, you self-reward or you do something, you know, you celebrate or something a little. But I too often go way above what I think I can do. And then I do feel that moment of disappointment in myself. Like, why couldn't I do this? Come on, you can do it. And then I'm like, wait a second, stop being so hard. You know, it's like this weird back and forth. It's uh, draining sometimes. Because you're the, you know, because we're both, you know, we're both our own bosses here. So there's no one, you know, there's no one actually talking to us. I know. (laughs) Except for ourselves, of course. So that makes me extra crazy. That can be worse sometimes too. I know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh gosh. Okay. So if somebody is struggling with any of the things that we've been talking about today, do you have recommendations for like where to start just to get some peace back? I think it's about like, you know, taking things small. Like sometimes I'll just set a timer for five minutes and then just try to do something. And anything here, I think like you have to know when to take a break and you know get a refresher. You know, I'm always good about getting refreshers with that too. And I think something I'm hoping to see too, like I, I'm looking into doing is I want I want to create more of a community of people that are you know that can express these struggles to each other mm-hmm. and and be able to say you know give each other tips on like you know you know because we have so many there are so many good things out there right now about, you know, how to do certain things, you know, how to do Pinterest, how to, how to do web stories, how to do, you know, all those things are coming out there. But like, you know, I want to see, see like more just and it's something like I want to try to get people together with too, mm. is get more people together and talk about the diff, you know, like, okay, and are there, these tasks going to, like, how am I going to here? You know, cause I'm sure there's a lot more people out there that are, you know, have some type of struggle that have some type of thing that's like holding them back, whether it's like, you know, anxiety depression they just don't have very high health esteem they don't have the encouragement you know they have the like do 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 but like you know what if you can't do like you know that kind of lift me up thing like like i want to be that more people so that's something like that i want to try to start a group going doing that and 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 be more supportive with those type of things so we can you can ask those questions you can say like hey i want to i want to pin 30 pins a week but mentally i don't know how to do it and we can like talk about those type of things I love this idea. I know you and I have talked about this in the past, and I think it's so important and needed in our space. So if this sound, if us kind of, I don't want to call it like support group, but it kind of is like a food blogging, mental health group of some sort sounds appealing, send me an email or send Eric an email. And if there's enough people, we could figure out how to make that work and like structure it. But I think it is such a good idea, Eric. I for sure need it. I think probably most of us could benefit from something like that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would love to see that, you know, get community of us going and just to be able to, you know, cheer each other on and just focus on, on that part of the business. You no, know, we yeah. have so many other things, but like to focus on the, you know, what could be one of the most important part of the business here is just being able to, you know, feel mentally well and being able to, you know, you know, you may have, you know, have the ideas, but to be able to execute, to help you execute, like definitely. Oh, so agree with that. Thank you. This has been so great. Thank you for being so open and vulnerable and just sharing your story, Eric, and bringing this topic to the table. I think it's super important to do that. So we really appreciate you and your time today. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. So it was a pleasure talking with you. Yeah. Do you have another quote or words of inspiration to leave us with, aside from all this amazing stuff you already shared today? One of the things I got back from Tastemaker in 2019, again, and this and this was Charity. Um, she's always She's been the MC at a lot of the Tastemakers. And she was going through the struggle of her husband dying of cancer and, and, and did that did, did die of cancer. And just the like the having to stay in your own lane type thing and kind of like not look at what's going on and comparing and comparing because she was comparing her husband finding out he was dying to other people celebrating their cancer free at the same time. And if you're in that moment, if you're doing that comparison, then you're trapped. You're 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 feeling yourself, you're looking at all the negative things. You can't be happy for that person. You're upset for yourself. So you, you know, so you have to kind of like 
not trying to, you know, look at, the, you know, keep going forward yourself without, without, you know, looking for advice and things. A lot of people here looking at ideas here, but also, but, but mainly just like, I'm going to keep driving down the road. I'm going to keep looking, yeah. trying to improve myself. Is that that's the way I think you have to do it. Oh, that's such a great way to end. So true. Yeah. And we'll put together show notes for you, Eric. If you want to go look at those, they're at eblogtalk.com forward slash eat like no one two numeral two. Tell everyone where they can find you, Eric. All right, so you can find me at eatlikeknowone.com. I'm on Instagram at eatlikeknowoneelts. I also have a podcast myself. Yay. Uh, Megan inspired me too, and that one's called Eat, Shop, Waste Not. You can find me on Amazon and uh, Google and Apple and Spotify and all those podcasting apps here. So you should also check that out too. Definitely do that, everyone. And if anyone wants to reach out to you about you know, this group the idea that you had, where can they do that? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, email me at eric at eatlikeknowone.com. Or also you can message me on Instagram. Either way would be fun. Awesome. It would be great. All right. Well, thanks again, Eric. You're the best. And thank you so much for listening today, food bloggers. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Eat Blog Talk. Don't forget to head to forum.eatblogtalk.com to join our free discussion forum and connect with and learn from like-minded peers. I will see you next time.